three years. It was three long years ago that I first laid eyes on the technology that would put OLED in its place. And I've waited since then for what would eventually become the Hisense wow. U9DG. This is no normal TV. Instead of one LCD panel filtering the white backlight, turning it into the vibrant content that you enjoy, the U9DG has two LCD panels. In theory, this unique design gives it the best of all worlds. Near perfect blacks, like an OLED, and vibrant peak brightness for the best possible home HDR experience. And, and it's already discontinued. That's terrific. Because it means that you might be able to score a deal on the remaining stock, which appears to be now on clearance, making this video interesting for two reasons. First, to get deep under the hood of a display tech the world may never see again, and second, to maybe score a deal, perhaps? Oh, and a third, to learn about our sponsor. Glasswire, thanks to Glasswire for sponsoring this video. Keep track of the weird stuff that's connecting to your PC even when you are not using it. If a strange device joins your Wi-Fi, you'll be notified instantly. Get 25% off today using code Linus at the link below. The big problem with displaying HDR content on LCDs is that even the best ones can't fully block out the backlight behind them, making black look like more of a faded out gray. And the solution thus far has been to divide up the backlight into multiple zones that can be individually controlled to darken or brighten the image depending on the content in front. This works okay, but even on mini LED TVs with a thousand plus dimming zones, the bloom or halo effect around bright objects is almost always visible to the naked eye. But what if you had two million local dimming zones? This one doesn't, it's only got 132, but in front of those dimming zones is a 1080p IPS black and white LCD panel that acts as a light filter. And then in front of that is a 4K IPS color panel to output our final 75 inch image at refresh rates of up to 120 Hertz. Doesn't that add a lot more cost and complexity you might ask? Yes. For everything packed into it, the U9DG is impressively slim, but Hisense says that the bonding process to fuse the panels together was extremely difficult to perfect, and it clearly contributes to the shocking 42 kilogram curb weight that resulted in our first sample being damaged in shipping. The good news is that it took years, but it was worth the wait. The two panel solution gives us an unbelievable amount of dynamic range on an LCD. I mean, these are nearly OLED like blacks, less than 0.01 nits, and it still reaches as high as roughly 1100 nits in a 5% window. And the best part is the fineness of that control. The 1080p monochrome panel doesn't quite match the resolution of the 4K color one, but if you need a pinhole of light in the darkness, it'll block most of the backlight strength before it ever reaches the color panel. And with over 2 million effective dimming zones, the halo effect is nearly imperceptible unless you put your eyeball to the glass. For reference, we compared the U9DG to a cheaper OLED and a nicer mini LED. And even though the mini LED had a whopping thousand zones of local dimming on a smaller 65 inch panel, the 75 inch Hisense was hands down the best performer for HDR content. Did I even mention yet that it has a quantum dot film and supports Dolby Vision? So unless you're in a light controlled environment where the OLED really shines, it's just, wow. And the U9DG is pretty color accurate too, giving us an average Delta E of 5.5 in IMAX HDR and just 2.3 in SDR filmmaker mode, similar to our LG mini LED and way ahead of our Vizio though it too is still pretty respectable for a home display. A quick note for the Hisense though, if you wanna get this crazy dynamic range while maintaining color accuracy, you'll wanna use IMAX mode with local dimming set to high. Now at this point, everything is proceeded as I had foreseen. But my big question for Hisense from day one has been, isn't this gonna add a bunch of processing delay and totally foobar the gaming experience? To find out, we had to hook it up. 
Along with Ethernet, USB A, RCA, a headphone jack, and optical output, the I.O. is solid with two HDMI 2.1 ports, one with eARC, and the U90G supports variable refresh rate with AMD FreeSync, as well as automatic low latency mode, which should kick in with any supported input device. That's promising for gaming. But unless the pixel response times of the two panels are darn near identical, you could end up with some really weird motion artifacts. Now, Hisense says they solved this, getting both of them to a matching eight milliseconds. But keeping them synced up does require some extra work, courtesy of their capable SOC with TCON or timing controller. We used an LDAP then with an RTX 3080 on our three TVs to test latency. And unfortunately, the Hisense does indeed lose handily to the competition. It's not the worst we've seen, and they were at least upfront about it. Eight milliseconds on the box should tell you that there'll be noticeable ghosting or motion blur, but as long as the scene isn't moving too fast, your games will look gorgeous. Like our new towels at lttstore.com. At this point, some of you must be wondering, if this performs as well as it does, then why is this the only TV on the market using this two panel tech? And why is it already discontinued? Well, first of all, this TV is relatively new, but the technology isn't. And there's a commercial mastering monitor from Sony that actually uses the same idea, the BVM HX310. It came out in 2019 and cost a whopping $30,000 at launch, keeping it firmly in the hands of the Hollywood elite, kind of like Chris Rock's face. It can also do a thousand nits full screen, and it has insane color accuracy for film colorists. By contrast, pun intended, the U9DG was always intended to undercut OLED for the consumer market, and it launched at just three to three and a half thousand US dollars. That's roughly a tenth of the price. But now, mere months later, you can already find it for just two grand at Best Buy, thanks to strong competition both from Mini-LED and new OLEDs from both LG and Samsung. As for why they're not being made anymore, our best guess is that it's due to production complexity and a competitive landscape that looks dramatically different today than it did three years ago when I first saw this demonstrated. So with Sony's mastering display being forever out of reach of the general public and dual panel tech off of Hisense's public roadmap, the U9DG might make more sense in a tech museum than it does in your living room. But if you can find it for a clearance price and you need a huge TV, mostly for movies with a little bit of light gaming, it's actually a pretty solid choice. And the built-in Google Assistant, Chromecast, and ALEXA are all nice bonuses. Just like this word from our sponsor, privacy. Privacy.com lets you buy things online using virtual cards rather than your real ones. And with Mother's Day coming up, you're likely to be ordering from some places that you have never ordered from before. So why not keep your identity and your bank info safe while you're shopping for flowers? You can set spending limits, pause and close cards at any time you want. And if you're the victim of a fraudulent transaction, privacy.com automatically declines the transaction and notifies you immediately. You can even sign up for free trials and offers without worrying about forgetting to cancel the subscription. With privacy.com, you can generate a one-time card number to sign up anonymously and safely closing the card as soon as it goes through. So no more jumping through customer service hoops in hopes of canceling or losing money on apps you never meant to spend on. Privacy.com offers different plans depending on your goals from cash back to team plans. And you can learn more by heading to privacy.com slash Linus where you can sign up for an account. New customers will automatically get $5 to spend on their first purchase. If you guys enjoyed this video, check out our QD OLED video called Samsung just made everything else obsolete. And they did, we're already seeing the fallout from it. Bye-bye, U9DG.